Hey guys, it's Ann over at Plan Obsessed, and today I'm planning murder. Yes, we all have that problem with uh, fungus gnats and fruit flies getting into our bins and in our house and driving us crazy. And this time, I've hired the killing done. I have ordered a butterwort from carnivorousplants.com, and today I'm going to pot him up so that he can start murdering. So first of all, uh, I have done a lot of research on what makes carnivorous plants happy as far as soil and water, et cetera, and so forth, and uh, it's not the guy in the background with the chainsaw. I don't know what's going on with that, but sorry. So here we are. We have got a bag of perlite and a bag of peat moss, and according to uh, Brad's greenhouse and a um, lot of other people who I'll, I'll, I'll link down below all the different people that I've been extracting information about carnivorous plants on. But uh, what we're going to do is they say 50% perlite, 50% uh, peat moss, and that these guys like to be much wetter than other kinds. So this is a unboxing as well as a planting video. So totally weird for what my channel is even though I'm plant obsessed. Generally, it's about worms. This is about getting the fungus gnats out of my wormery. All right, well, let me put you down and we'll get started. Okay, so first things first, we're going to do the 50-50 mix. And I am outside, which is why you hear the chainsaw in the background. So I won't breathe in all of the perlite dust, which is probably not good for you. And second of all, not going to breathe in the peat moss stuff. Then, what I have here is RO water. Uh, apparently, they... Okay. Dogs are going to do what they're going to do. So, you have to use RO water because the calcium and nutrients that are in regular tap water, it's not even the chlorine that is a bother. It is the fact that the... Carnivorous plants extract their nutrients from the bugs they eat, and so what you don't want is to add more nutrients in with your tap water. Apparently they're that sensitive. So I got myself a half a gallon of RO water here, and I'm mixing up the 50-50 for my butterwort, which is actually a North American native from the south, from south of where I am. Uh, that it's found in the Carolinas, in Florida, in that general sort of... They're just going to keep making that noise. Shush! So, I'm just going to keep mixing until it looks about 50-50. I don't know, that looks pretty good. Half little white dots and half brown dots. I think that'll work. So now that we've got the soil ready, I have purchased a new pretty pot for my little killer. And what I'm going to do is fill this up. Because they don't really have much of a root system, you have to put all the soil in before you get the plant in. So according to what I have seen, need to kind of fill it up even though they're not going to have very many roots, this is the, you know, pot that I decided I wanted. And they said to kind of mound it up so that you have something to put their tiny little roots on. So I am doing exactly what I'm told, because I find that in areas that I am not an expert in, that is the best thing to do. So, now we have this a whole lot of extra because I can't ever seem to make anything in small batches, doesn't matter what it is, worms, potting soil. And then what we're going to do is we're going to do the unboxing of my plant. And this came from carnivorous plants and this is a butterwort lutea. Okay, apparently it is glued to the bottom of the box. Jeez, I'm one of those kids in Christmas. Oh look, it's even got leaves and stuff. I wasn't expecting that. I was expecting it to be kind of dormant. 
So I will do a quick plug for them. All right, so here we go. We've got Carnivorous Plant Nursery uh, in Smithsburg, Maryland. And you can see the phone number if you wanted to buy one of these little critters. A large butterwort. But it is a butterwort lutea, which has a yellow flower and is from the United States, Zone 10. Now I'm in Zone 5, so this little guy is going to live in my house. Okay, that is a long tube. Okay. So, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, this is not large. But from what I understand, when you buy these things, a lot of times they're literally the size of a pencil eraser when you buy them. So, this is large by most people's standards. So, here is the plant tag. Yellow butterwort. Large. And that's all I get. But I do know that it is a, they're called affectionately called pings, mostly because I think people can't pronounce the uh, genus. But it is lutea, which is yellow. Or maybe it's for moons. I don't, I don't know why they call it lutea. So let's, let's see what we've got here. Looks like it's in nice, big wad of sphagnum moss. Alright, now I'm just taking it away from the crown because I don't want crown rot. But here it is, you can tell not very many roots. In fact, this is quite a bit of roots from what I've seen on other people's videos. This is like a crazy amount of roots. So this plant has arrived in fabulous fashion to shout out to them. So, let's see. Maybe not so big. Maybe like this. Okay. So then, probably just gonna put its home sphagnum back on top, keep everything nice and damp as I have seen in many people's videos that they really, really, really like their water and they should under no circumstances ever be allowed to dry out. And I think being that this one is from North America, it's not tropical, it will go through a dormant phase. So I'm not sure if that's what it's doing right now or not. So not getting the leaves wet at all. I am going to settle this in. Normally these are grown in a, a tray with water, but being that we might be going into its dormant season, I'm a little conflicted about if I should put a tray of water underneath of it. Um, I think once the heat turns on in the house, then I should definitely put one underneath of it. But if anybody has a, a butter wart, let me know um, if that is what you do. But here this little guy is. He's going to get big. So that's why he's got such a big pot. But what he is going to do for me is he is going to murder the fungus gnats. All right, guys. Well, if you like this video, give me a, well, not pretty clean thumb up today. And if you're not already a member of my family, please click that subscribe button. And if you want to know what I'm doing when I'm doing it, ring that little bell icon. Remember, look in below for all the specifics to the people who were my mentors on this and more for the place that I bought it from. All right, guys. Well, thanks for hanging out with me and my plant. And everybody, have a good day.